Hello, is this the famous Corporal Robinson? This is definitely Corporal Robinson. I don't know what the famous for. Oh, it's famous. I, one thing I've learned about <laughs> you vets, they don't ever want to take credit for what they've done. You're definitely famous. <laughs> Uh, and I, I got to refrain from calling you kiddo. You're probably, you, I've, I've got a bad, uh, what do you call it, a bad uh, thing about calling everybody kiddo. So, no calling you kiddo or sir. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, definitely. I think I got you on the age years. A little bit, just by a little. Just by a little. So, how are you doing tonight, brother? We're doing good here. Um... We had a lot of good feedback from the fans. Got a lot of fan questions to ask you. Hopefully we can get a good bit in for this hour. But, you know, you're one of these old school vets, so obviously the fans have a lot of questions. And, oh, I kept all these positive because I don't put up with no shit on my channel. Of course, this show is completely uncensored, so of course you can say whatever you want. But one of the... Uh, yeah, I know it's it's a it's a fucking thing that I I like to fucking do. <laughs> oh, so let's start off. You served in the service. How many years was you in? I was in nine forty ninety eight. So that's one of the fans' questions right there. Now, uh, what made you originally want to get into wrestling? Well, I was pretty much a fan of it my whole life. I mean, every Saturday, me and my dad would watch uh, USWA wrestling, and then we'd go fishing. That was kind of a routine we had. So, uh, you know, from the time I was, you know, 7 to to 17 until I went to the Marine Corps, you know, that's, that was our, our Saturday ritual was wrestling and then, and then fishing every Saturday. So, you know, I was a big fan of it, you know, growing up, you know, watching the first WrestleMania and everything. Um, and then when I got out to Marine Corps and all that shit had happened, and, you know, we went to uh, Louisville Gardens that night and I got dropped, and luckily I have a good right hook with Doug Gilbert, and then that started off the, uh, the wrestling school and USWA and then in the KCW and IWA. So, being around in the business as long as you have been, and you, you've obviously been known as one of the stiffest guys, you know, in the business... Who was the first guy to actually uh, give you that stiff hit to rock you? Well, that would have been uh, the, the macho warrior Rick Hogan. Uh, his name was, was Tyler Doom, um, for some of y'all in Cincinnati area. But he was he was doing uh, he was doing you know the macho warrior Rick Hogan gimmick. Uh, he had all three of them. And I, I took a big. He, remember, he was six nine, like three hundred ninety two pounds or something. Um, and he was like, you know, they want to, I was a big baby face coming out with the American flag and all that and just starting. Um, so I was wanting to make a big impact with the boys and, uh, in the back plus make the fans go. So I came out to bring you, John, you ever seen Global Gardens, you know, the back platform that was sitting at Global Gardens? Yeah. All right. So when you come through the curtains and you got that long walk, but then there's that big platform. So the first thing I did was I took two big forearms from them and about knocked me out. Then I took a power bomb off of that. Oh, off off of the damn right, the ramp. Yeah, off off that off that like um, it was like a uh, where, where, the, where you walk in at it was almost like a big flat table before the seat started. Yeah, before you know something for the march. Like honestly, I think uh, like in my career, honestly, the first person that ever stiffed me was a damn female, which is funny, but <laughs> uh, I don't. <laughs> Her name was uh, Envy. She actually was on the Jerry Springer show at one time. I don't know how like how big she got, but she gave me a knee yeah. from hell. And like that was the first time I ever got stiffed in wrestling was by her. And then like the second time was Freak Show. Of course, you know Freak Show. That's the way he is. So yeah, that's the way Freak works. Uh, you know, it's just the way the way it works. You know, that's why it was fun working in Deep South, guys. You know what I'm saying? Him and Tank and all them. Uh, great dudes, great dudes. But you, you knew he was in for it. Yeah, like. Uh, you know, I never, I never got to work Necro. Obviously, I never got to work Tank, but I did get in there with uh, Necro. Definitely gives it. Up. Like, and I know, like, I know, hell, I never got to work you. We've been on, we've only been on a few shows ever together, and yeah. never got to work you. But you know, there are certain vets. You know, you know they're gonna, they're gonna hit you. And see, I've, I've, I've said this on multiple broadcasts before. You know, it's always been a hard transition for me. 
to uh, the way I was trained was, you know, to be feather light. And it's been, it's always been hard, even to this day, to actually be stiff with some people, especially when it's the first time working them, because it's just yeah. not, it wasn't the way I was trained, and it's not the way I am. Right, right, right. Well, back in the old days, you know what I'm saying, it, you know, it, it, was, it was against the rules, you know what I'm saying, you didn't work tight that much. Yeah. Uh, you, and see, know, you, had, you had to work good, but then, you know, I got more to the hard-hitting stuff, you know, when I got to IWA and South. you know, and that's just how they went. And uh, I wanted to, the good thing about that was putting, rea what I believe was putting reality back into wrestling, you know what I'm saying, Vincent was trying to kill the reality part of wrestling now. You know, and I was, it made us, made everything different. You know what I'm saying? They couldn't, they couldn't knock out where I was fade. That punch didn't touch him. I mean, every time we ended up throwing something, they hit. There, there was contact. Yeah, like, just talking about that, you know, the 10 Years of Carnage DVD, if, if you fans have not ordered it yet, that is a hell of a documentary to get. And, yeah. And, you know, you're on there, obviously. I'm on there. But it talks about 10 years of uh, Carnage Cup. And it gives you a real insight on the history of Carnage Cup. And like you said, you know, making it real to a business that obviously has been put out there as, you know, fake now. But, you know, like you said, you woke those people in the first and second row to be like, holy shit, he just knocked the shit out of them. Right, right. And yeah, you're going for, you're going for that wild factor. That's, that's what I try to do every night. You know what I'm saying? Like, holy oh, shit, that guy was different. Now you've obviously you've had a lot of history. You've I've got so much like material on you. Like uh, one of the questions here is, who was the one person through your whole career that you actually had legitimate beef with that you had to work with on a constant basis? Was there anybody like that? Uh, no, no, there wasn't. There wasn't you know too much where what I had heat with the guy. Um, if I wrestle New Jack right now, that would be the case. Um, <laughs> you know, but anybody else on the planet? No, I always had a, a good relationship with the boys. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't, there wasn't no animosity. Even when we did the IWA CGW invasion angle, um, there wasn't no hostility with the boys or anything. Um, there's been a few times, you know, where there was a jealousy thing uh, that happened with Doc Harley one time. Um, after I'd after I had, uh, Ian had, uh, me and Ian worked in the real Bob Bar salt match and they, they kept the temple to my artery to my brain and I almost died. Um, and they got me to the hospital and stuff and then they stepped flat me to the VA and then the VA almost killed me and they stepped flat me to the University of Louisville. And then, uh, that's when I made the opinion I'll never go back to the VA. But, uh, U of L saved me, so it was about a week after that, uh, and I was a surprise at the, at the team club. Uh, when I came out, the whole place was floating, and uh, Ash must have took offense to it or something, but uh, he had, uh, like, a steel pipe, and he was wearing my head out. The, the, the gimme with him was where they chopped me at the end, and I said, that, but he was just wearing my head. I'm going to wash my head. He's like, fuck you, and he hit it. So I told him on the way back, though, I thought at that time it was, like, 65, uh, 240, 250, you know what I'm saying? And then uh, he, uh, Ian, separate, you know, all the boys over around us, the, the push the table back, me and he, uh, I was went at it and I beat the little piss out of him. You know, that's, that was the, the first statement of, uh, hey, I guess I don't think I'm going to fuck a court. Yeah. See, like, even before, let's see, I'm trying to remember what was the first show as a fan that I was on with you before I actually, you know, got into wrestling because, you know, I was, you know, I used to rent rings and other stuff like that before I ever got into wrestling, but I want to say it was a, it was one of those random IWA shows here in Alabama, you know, I was in the crowd, and, you know, I knew about your, you know, I knew about your reputation as, you know, you were that stiff hard ass. I want to, I want to say that you wrestled uh, Bull Pain that night, if I'm correct. I probably am. Yeah. Bull was super tight. No, yeah, yeah, I've heard. Had a I've heard Bull. He's a stiff. He's a stiff ass as well, right? Yeah, I mean, it, but, but it's not. It's not nothing. You know, a lot of guys that end up working me end up finding out it ain't. It ain't nothing what they talk. They're like, holy shit, that was a night off. You know, but the, I mean, the fans believe. You know, that's it. Yeah. You know, once you once you get the fans involved in the match, it makes the night a whole lot easier. You know, with me and Bull, man, it was it wasn't hard. He was always a, a big. He 
heel and you know, I started off as a heel and turned into this massive baby face working as a heel. Uh, and you know, that's what carried me through, you know, my whole career was that that attitude and don't get too fucked, you know, type deal. Um but Bull was always a pleasure work, man. He, you know, he, he's one of them old school vets that been around forever. Uh, I worked him, I probably worked Bull at least 1,500 times. I've actually never got to meet a uh, Bull in person. He's one of the, he's oh, one of the few. Yeah, he's a great guy, man. Great dude. Now I mean, you, he's one of the ones that, you know what I'm saying, you don't want to piss him off. Yeah. But uh, overall, you know what I'm saying, he, he's a great, solid guy. Now, you, you were talking about the invasion angle. Like, you know, now in this day and age in, you know, deathmatch wrestling and just indie wrestling, period, everything's become such a business with, you know, I want my promotion to be over more than your promotion. You know, you don't see no invasion yeah. stuff no more. And Yeah, you know, it's bad, man. It's, it's a sad way, way, way it's gone. You know what I'm saying? I, I was always told people, man, you work together, you make more money. I mean, right now... If you leave the heat and bullshit and petty, petty drama that's, you know, backstage shit that doesn't mean absolutely nothing. And, you know, leave that bullshit out the door, man, you make more money. Yeah, like, the only promotion right now down here in the South I could see IWA, Deep South, uh, working with is the uh, Pro Wrestling Georgia, you know, which is out of Georgia. Great promotion. Uh, yeah. Cody McCauley is uh, working with them, booking. You know, that's a great promotion. They've actually got a huge show in October and then uh, another one, I believe, in February. But, you know, that's awesome promotion to look out for. Uh, yeah. But now it is where too many promotions, it's just about me, me, me. And, you know, like you said, nobody wants to leave their egos at the door anymore. Yeah, that's crazy. And that's honestly, crazy. besides besides what uh, DJ Hyde is doing... I believe that's one reason his promotion has went downhill so bad right now was his inability yeah. to work with people, especially uh, GCW, which you know you were you did the uh, the NGI, the very first one yeah. that that match with Masada was you know fucking killer. That was that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was great. That was a great one of my greatest matches. There's actually there's a Masada question here somewhere. Let me look. Uh, what is your personal relationship with Masada? Oh, me and Bert's great. You know, me and me and Bert are personally fine. I uh, love Bert to death. No, no issues whatsoever with Bert, man. We put on great matches together, and, you know, I think he I think he remarried and moved on. You know what I'm saying? I don't talk to him as much as I used to over the years, but uh, no, Bert, Bert's a great dude. Yeah, I've, I've recently read that where someone was asking about was he still doing death matches, and I read where he was recently married in Texas. He's on. From what I've read, he's only working in Texas right now. But, but you know, once I got married and I had those little girls, I've I've calmed my shows down, obviously. Right, right. If I sound, uh, well, just because I got a really bad chest infection, I'm working with guns in my chest. So if I cough, I apologize to you fans out there. You know, the fans were extremely right. happy about uh, me reaching out to you about this because honestly, you are. The only person I can say is a true legend that's been on my show was uh, Insane Lane and uh, Freak Show. And, you know, most people yeah. consider them a Southern legend just because they want to hate on the Deep South. But, you know, you're a... Hey, them guys are awesome. I know. They're <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, you know, I got nothing but respect for both of them guys. Now, I have not been able to wrestle Insane Lane yet. I hope I get a chance to wrestle him before... He retires, or I re-retire again. Uh, yeah. The last show that I was actually on with you was the uh, Super Stiff Tournament, which was a crazy show. Yeah. And you, uh, you, won sure, uh, you won that one over uh, Big D, right? Yeah, yeah, Big Larry, Larry Legend, man. And now he's in TNA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he's, he's doing well on Impact. Um... Uh, he, he's one of the greatest underrated workers out there right now, too. And you know that was uh, my yeah, that was my first time witnessing him that night. And I've always considered Freak Show a big dude, but when you put Larry next to Freak Show, Freak Show was small. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Larry's a big guy, man. He's a big guy. Now, all, all the way around, he's massive. 
your years of working with Mid South and Ian, how was that? Um, you know, if it wasn't for Mid South, I'd have never made my national exposure. Um, people think I want my to bury him, but I don't. I mean, he, he's got it in his head for some reason. But I uh, got their building shut down back in 2013 or something, and that's just the most insane, ludicrous shit ever. So I've never done that. When I helped build that company to what it was, I would never destroy it even if I was mad at him. So for him to think that is, is straight fucking insanity. Um, I think he even said on a recent interview that he heard my voice on, on, a, on, a, on a voicemail to... Uh, to one of the spots and that, and that that just infuriates I don't mind I've done a lot of fucked up shit in this you know what I'm saying business and shit but, but you know what I'm saying I've, I've uh, accepted and explained and all that shit but I'm not gonna let people put shit on me that I didn't do and I for sure never got D in building shit now so other than that um you know Smith South was an amazing place to work you know we had the top talent in the world coming in and out every week you know I was working five to six nights a week um I was one of the top baby faces there probably of all time. Um, you know, and, and, and it, it lets you look, uh, be able to work a variety of people each night. You know, I, I worked with everybody from top to bottom all the time. You know what I'm saying? My main job was to get people over because I was already over. Yeah. Um, so I worked with a lot of the new talent coming in that we were trying to build. Um, so it, it taught me it taught me a lot on, you know, how to tell a story, you know, build storylines, make, make things matter, um, which I was able to take on to other places, you know. How was it working with CM Punk? It was awesome. Me and Punk had, had, had a great little feud together, man. Him and Adam Pierce both were amazing. Um, me, me and Punk, of course, had different uh, values on things. You know, he was a straight edge gimmick, and at that time, I was on every gimmick in the world. Yeah. Uh, not so anymore, but back then I was. Um, so we'd rib and mess with each other all the time, but when it came to, to race stuff, man, we were on point with each other every match. See, I'm one of these. Uh, I'm one of these guys. Like, if I was at a WWE show, I'd be one of them that's still chanting CM Punk because, like. Between Punk and Daniel Bryan, those were my two guys. Like I've liked them since ROH, and you know, it's just those are my guys. Yeah, yeah, they're both great dudes too, man. Personally, so. Did you ever get to uh, work, work uh, Bryan? Yeah, I got to work Bryan too in California. Hell yeah! Um, it was great working him too. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're both class acts. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to in ring working, and you don't get no better than them guys. Technically sound. Being a Brian Star, the most technically sound guy. I mean, you know, people don't mention him anymore, especially like that back when it was a bit tight than I was, but uh, Brian's uh, as technical as it gets. He reminds me a lot of a Dean Malenko style. Yeah. <laughs> Dean, Dean Malenko was one of the... Dean Malenko was one of the few guys, like, during the WCW era, like, when, you know, I considered him, like, you know technically a nobody because you know he didn't get that respect he deserved but like I would watch his matches especially with William Regal and I was just like yeah. damn this is you know this is where you learn at from watching stuff like that yeah he's one of the greatest ever you, you can never say anything about Dean Malenko man he's one of the greatest ever yeah like Dean Malenko back in those days against like Daniel Bryan in his prime to me that would have been beyond classic like you couldn't you couldn't pay me enough to watch that So now, out of the organizations that you always worked through and worked with, what is one tournament that you didn't get to win that you wanted to win? Oh, shit. Um, well, any of the King of the Deathmatches, I always won the one those. Uh, and I got to win two of them. So, uh, and I never got to win the Dan Carnage Cup. That was one of them. Um... Most of the other ones, uh, the Hardcore Cup I won, was in the finals of every one of those. Uh, yeah, I would have to say the Carnage Cup, and then, uh, and then, um, yeah, the King of Death, you know, you always want to win King of Death. Yeah. Now, what do you think, like, the problem is with the fans right now? You know, today Alex Cologne won back-to-back -to -back, uh, Tournament of Survival tournaments. And, you know, just 
scheming through uh, social media, you know, the fans are hating on it because he won back to back. What What do you think the fans' problem is right now with just the deathmatch scene in general? Man, honestly, I don't know. With all the uh, physical things and medical issues, I haven't even paying no attention to that. Uh, so I have no idea what the hell they're doing with that. Uh, but I know that yeah, I mean, um, Masada so. won, you know, Masada won, what, Tournament of Death back-to-back, -back, if I'm correct. But here yeah, lately, here lately, it's, you know, I, I've said it a million times, the fans love you to death, but damn, you get on my nerves. <laughs> yeah. they, they've been yeah, bitching bad about, like, everything. Like, I'm telling you, you can go out there and put on... You know, five star matches every night, but that one night you slip, you're under the rug right now. And yeah, like here, I don't know. This 2020 has been a fucked up year, so. And you know me, I, I stay on this social media because you know I gotta share this, share my damn page. But <laughs> the fans have definitely been weird. Now, what do you, being a death match worker for so long, how do you feel about? the people that go out there and mail in their matches? You know, I've never did that, so I don't know how that, that operates, you know what I'm saying? Even if I'm hurt, sick, or whatever, um, it's like laying in the hospital bed out, you know what I'm saying? You, you don't do that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know the mentality of mailing it in because I, I've never done it. Yeah. Um, no matter what, you know what I'm saying, no matter what position I was in, no matter how hurt I was, no matter what was going on, I still went out there and gave them the best possible show I could give them. So, uh, I don't even know a worker's mentality on why they were even mailing it. I mean, I can, I can completely agree, you know, out of all the, you know, the fans have hated me for damn years, but one thing I can say is I've never went out there and half-assed it, like... I had a fucking piece of damn finger basically hanging off at Carnage Cup 10. <laughs> or, you know, it was a piece of meat, but still. But, you know, I wrapped that bitch and I just kept going. Uh, you know, I, I've never quit on a damn match. Almost broke my back with Spider Boudreaux. Finished my damn match. You know, I'm just... I, I'm like you. I don't get it. I, I can't mail it in. You know, and something here lately... Um, some death matches, which to me it don't make sense not to bleed in a death match, but here lately it's become a thing with people not bleeding in their match. You know, uh, I, the only way I can see that happening is if you're a major heel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, you get that heat. Uh, but even then, you know what I'm saying? I've never seen that done. Oh, why would you do that? Um, and at least be smart enough not to get hit with nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you're if you're not bleeding, then don't get in the head, hit in the head with anything. I'll tell you this. Don't make the gimmicks look weak. My last two matches that I've done, I think I've bled worse than I ever have in my career. <laughs> <laughs> like, two matches ago, I got in the ring with someone you know pretty damn well, Peter B. Beautiful. Oh, yes, I know him very well, very well. Like, just my last death yeah, I just talked to him uh, recently. And, uh, uh, you know, me and him wrestled in, I think it was February. And, like, I, I, I gigged so fucking bad in that one. I was gushing. Like, I, I, and it, I, it was within, like, the first two minutes of the match. And I was, you know, crimson already. And then I just did an underground show for Deep South, uh, Shit Apocalypse, where I did the same fucking thing. You know, within minutes, I was just gashed. <laughs> so... It, it just, it sells the match to be, you know, bleeding like a stuffed pig instead of instead of being out there looking pretty. <laughs> so, out of the many, many people that you have worked, who was it that probably pissed you off the most in the ring that you had to uh, stiff if you've had to do that? Uh, Brandon Prophet. Um, it's easy, easy. We did the Razor Blade Boys match, and I told him to lay me flat, and he set me on my ass on top of the Razor Blade, so it cut my ass and almost my nuts, and I, I commenced to beating the piss out of him. 
I know um, I've worked with Brandon a few times. <laughs> yes. Um, but that's the only one where I had to literally just tee off on. There's been a few times I had to, I had to, uh, you know, fire up on a couple people. Like, hey, we can do this the either way or the hard way. And they always managed to come back down and calm down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say that he's probably the only one where I had to literally just beat the piss out of I got to I got to work him I believe at Softcore Cup two and well no it was actually Softcore Cup one and then um, a ten dollar wrestling show good you know we worked well together I mean, we were in like a TLLC match and some other kind of fucked up match but both matches went well uh, now you also obviously worked for JCW. You have a lot of history of that, and you also got to be in their movie as well. Was you in Big Money, let's see, Big Money Hustler or Rustler? Big, big Money Rustlers, I was in. Rustler, that was the I Western was, one, yeah. yeah. How was that experience? Uh, it was great, you know what I'm saying? It was great, you know, and then, you know, out of that is when I did the uh, whole Operation Rico thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, that, that turned out pretty awesome, too. No, uh, I read... It, it, it was really it was an amazing experience, you know, both for both of those. You know, we were out there eight, six, six, eight months, I think, in L.A. Now, I read on here where the the Operation Repo, was that a shoot, or was it... Re or yeah, it's, yeah, so what they did was they didn't tell tell the people that was involved in it what was going to happen. Uh, what it did was the guy that was running the stuff in the movie was also running things on that show, and I had thrown some big punches during the uh, during the movie and uh, the guy was like man he goes can you see how would you that right right hand of yours I said it's pretty fucking legit <laughs> and he was like well can you do a one take one shot deal on a reality show and I was like well I'll be, let's see because well the, the difference is if it pays from three grand to five hundred so if, it, if it's a one take you get three grand if it's, if it's more than one take because I already know everything I had to re be redone is only five hundred yeah <laughs> I know. I know it looked damn real. <laughs> See, that was. I used to watch that show all the time, and when that week when you were on there, I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what is your is do do you have a current relationship with the owner of GCW, Brett Lauderdale? have a dream opponent that you would like to have as your like go home farewell match? I do have some names I just want to throw at you, and you, you just give me your opinion or your first thought on these gentlemen. Uh, let's see. Akira. Great talent. Uh, up and coming. 
gunner. He's going to be the next wave of those guys. Let's see. John Wayne Murdoch. One of the best in the game. Still one of the best in the game. Me and Murdoch have some unbelievable matches to go with. Yeah, uh, right now, he, he, he is as top as you get when it comes to best match wrestling. See, I, li I love Murdoch. I think the best thing he ever did was change his name to John Wayne. Because, you know, at one time he was uh, Damian Payne, I believe. Yeah, so and, like, uh, and I just know from the, you know, a lot of, lot of years with Murdoch. Yeah, and Last I... Last we, we worked together with shit now. Let's see. Phoenix Kid. Uh, they're a good hot flyer. I got the kid, the kid out of, uh, where's he out of? He's out of uh, Texas, I believe. Texas, yeah, he's done. He's done about breaking them. He's, he's, he's got good solid stuff. Neil Diamond Cutter. Neil Diamond Cutter, one of the most underrated deathmatch guys in the game. Um, great, solid on every level. Um, he's a smaller guy, but he can do anything. See, I got the pleasure to work him at Carnage Cup Seven. And uh, Exorcist death match, and you know that was I was still pretty damn green at that time, and a lot of people yeah. said that that was one of the most underrated matches of the night because it never got talked about really because that was the night that I stabbed uh, Spider Boudreaux. And while we're on that subject, coming from a veteran, what do you still what do you think of that situation? Uh, I, 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 yeah, I took it to a different level. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I took things to a whole different level there. Right? Uh, I love working with Spiker. You know, I've worked with Spiker a few times. Um, would I personally do it? No. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? Would I do that spot? No. Um, but, you know what I'm saying? It got a lot of holy fucks. <laughs> I mean... It got, it, got, it, it got as much heat as it did good shit, so I don't know which way it went for you guys. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell you this. For me, it may have, get, it may have gave me a lot of heat you know, over the country, but at least here in the South, it gave me bookings, it gave me money, yeah. and it gave me some titles. So it did me well. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So you can't, you know, what they, they, a lot of times they say, you know, no, any publicity is good publicity. Yeah. You know, so, so, you know I, I know it got your name nationally. I know that for sure. And, you know, honestly, hell, here lately, you know, it's been, I want to say it's got over 25,000 views, which... It's been taken off the internet a few times because the internet's soft. But if it wouldn't have got taken down, I'm pretty sure that damn video would probably have a hundred thousand uh, views. I'm sure. But I know it's sure. I know it's been taken down twice because it says you know uh, what uh, mature content or whatever they've yeah, taken the that, shit down. That's that, that, somebody reporting. Yeah. Let's yeah. see. I'm talking about Spider, what, 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 uh, Spider Boudreaux, what about him? Uh, you know, I worked Spider, Southern Slaughter Cup, man, it was, it was great. Uh, Spider's a good dude, man. So, personally, he's a great dude, and I had a great match with him, so. And you won uh, that tournament as well, didn't you? Yes, yes, yes. I think, I think during my discussion with, uh, Freak Show, he called you probably the, I think he said the greatest tournament winner, because you win, when you get in a tournament, you win the damn tournament. <laughs> Most of the time, or I'm in the finals. Yeah. I, I usually make a, I usually make a good run in, in each tournament that I do get involved in. Now I know this one right here was brought up a few shows ago, but Carnage Cup Ten was the show that everybody on the card wanted to win. What was your like? What was your mindset going into that one? I like obviously, you know, you wanted to win it. Every, everybody wanted to fucking win it. And, like, you know, I've read many stories, you know, so many people hated that I was winning it, and, you know, that kind of shit. What was your, you know, what was your situation going in the Carnage Cup 10? Uh, well, my, I went into it like I do every other show. I wanted to steal it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if I was going out early, um, I was going to try to have the two best matches on the card, the three best matches on the card. Um, and that's the way I approach those type of situations. Um, I don't concern myself with what's going on with anybody else. I just concern myself with what I'm doing. Um, and making sure that it's at the top of the game. And me and Tank killed each other the first night. And me and Blight the second night was great, too. So, uh, yeah, that's, a, that's, how, that's how I go, you know, how I, I go into those kind of matches or tournaments. 
Yeah, you and uh, Tank's match was, you know, hellacious stiff. And hell, you and, like, I consider you and Bryant's one of the more underrated for the uh, both nights because it was a killer fucking match. But, you know, it wasn't... <laughs> It wasn't one of those matches nobody talked about, and it's just like, why? Why ain't nobody talking about that? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was surprising too, because I mean, it was a great fucking match for me and Brian. It was, yeah, match. it was a killer fucking match. Like, I know the the, I'm trying to remember, night one, I believe it was like Murdoch and uh, I can't remember who, I can't remember. No, it was Josh Crane and Del Patrick's. Everybody, you know, was like that match stole day one. And then, you know, on day two, obviously, the damn god-awful Saw match yeah. was, you know, what everybody talked about. But it was like, you know, that it's hard to believe that that weekend there was probably like 20-some matches. And, you know, to break, break down that whole show to just say, hey, these were the two matches, you know, people need to go back and watch that tournament just in general. Yeah, for sure. Most definitely. Most definitely. Uh you're not going to find no more hard hitting than what me, me and Tanks was. Yeah. Period. Anyway. Um, and uh, that's what that match should have been. You know, and the second was, was uh, you know, getting Brian over with the still making sure that I look super strong. You know what I'm saying? Because technically, I mean, I should have won that match, but we did the whole tank coming out gimme, so it worked out good. Yes. Um, so, uh, Maybe Kevin will book a uh, Stiff Man 2 tournament and we can get that match between you and uh, Tank. Yeah, hey, I'm always down for that. Because, did, did, like, in the story, did you and Tank ever settle anything from that weekend? No, no, I sure didn't. So, pay attention, Kevin. I'm booking this shit for you. And see, the good thing is I go back and rewatch these shows because my kids, for the love of God, especially Amanda, loves wrestling. You know that I, I yeah. believe that was the one that you met at the uh, the uh, what was that show? The Super Stiff. That's the one that you met at the Super Stiff tournament. She <laughs> loves wrestling. <laughs> she came up to the gate tonight uh, during the NXT uh, pre-show. And just randomly, John Cena me and said, "You can't see me." And I'm just like, "Okay." <laughs> but <laughs> you've had a you've had a hellacious run, you know. Uh, here recently, as you mentioned, we've lost some of the greats, you know, Danny Havoc. Recently, yeah. uh, I've got I never got to wrestle Danny. I did get to hang in the back with him. You know, he gave me some encouraging words right before the Saul One match with Spider because you know he did razors before and which I've clearly said before like his match with Insane Lane at Carnage Cup which was a razor blade match was one of those matches that was like to me I was like hey this is kind of what I would do if I was out there so you know I, you know I looked up to Danny and uh Insane Lane for that and I know you and Danny got to work a shitload yeah yeah Danny was uh he was one of the time man He's one of the most biggest thinkers in the deathmatch world ever. Uh, he brought a lot of good guys up. Uh, he was just a great, solid, all-around person. Man. Um, he, 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 he dearly and sorely missed already. Yeah, yeah. Like I know, I know the more I always say it's morning when I heard it. You know, I, I just it, you know it it sucked. You know because any of them. You know it. it we're, you know we're a brotherhood. We all are. And you know, maybe maybe we don't talk to each other like we should. And, you know, all of us have relationships. You know, in wrestling, and you know, it's life. We don't get to see each other and talk to each other like we like we should. But you know, when we lose one each one of the uh, one of our own, you know, it hurts. Yeah, it hurts real bad. It does real bad, and for a long time. Yeah, because you know. It's it'll come that day when you, you when you sit there and think you know hey let me call and then then it's when you hit, when it hits you like no because <laughs> you know I've had yeah, yeah, I tell everybody especially with things where they are in twenty twenty man yeah you get the time you got a loved one or somebody you ain't spoke to in a while you better call them man you just you never know because you know I've 
over the years, I've lost some good friends of mine, you know, in the business. Acid being one of them, Nasty Nate, you know, a lot of guys that I've worked with for years in the business, uh, they've both passed on. And, you know, when I go back and watch some of their stuff, it just, you know, it hits you then. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I've lost way too many to even count. 13 in the last, you know, four, three months. Uh, fucking overall, you're sitting in probably the 15 and 60. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's a, that's a rough subject for me. So right now, like, your personal, let's see, I'm trying to read this, your personal opinion, who is the greatest deathmatch worker in the U.S. currently? Oh, man. Either Gage or Tremont. See, I, I've, I've personally went on the level and said Tremont myself. Like, yeah, I've yeah, never got yeah, to. That's one of the as far as accolades and what he's done in the business and everything he's done and his personality and how he is and how he runs the company. Like, he's just a great solid dude all the way around. Plus, he's one of the best ever ever done this. There's nothing he hasn't done, there's nothing he hasn't won. Uh, yeah, I would, yeah, I would definitely put Tremont and Gage right there with him. And anytime those two, anytime those two get in the ring together, you know it's a classic. Uh, yep. And to me, Tremont. Murdoch's pretty, Murdoch's pretty close. Yes, like I'm telling you this, and this is just my opinion personally. If John Wayne Murdoch yeah. was getting Slack, booked, yeah, that's another one. Slack's up there now. Slack. Yeah. 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 I love some slack. Uh, if John Wayne Murdoch was getting booked on every show that was getting booked, like GCW, GCW, um, ICW, all of them, he would probably be the number one person right now. Oh yeah, as far as talent, the way it should go, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and the, the, I definitely put the uh, the, the top three is probably Tremont, like Gage, and Murdoch. Now, like my personal feeling right now is, I'm saying. In, in a year or two years, if Akira keeps up doing what he's doing yeah, and keeps these booking. If he don't get hurt, that's the problem, though. He's doing young shit. You know, so he reminds me a lot of McMondo. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. You know, he's still young. 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 Uh, and I say, you know what I'm saying, you got to know when to let your body rest. Yeah. You know, you, you have to, you have to recuperate, you can't just do it. Uh, and I was bad about it back then too, I was doing night after night after night after night after night. You know, different cities, different towns, you know, we you know, we do Louisville and Milwaukee and Detroit and Philly and here. You know, we're doing a number and I go to California out there for three or four days and we go to San Francisco and then Portland and fly back. And <laughs> so the schedule was insane. Uh, but you gotta look to the young guys, you know, doing that kind of stuff. You gotta let your body heal and make sure you take care of yourself, man. You know, put alcohol and shit. The infections and shit are bad. Look at, look at Marcus Crane. He was one of the book, biggest stuff and comers coming. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, just that one staple ended it, you know. You know, I actually had a scare for a minute where I thought I had a, I thought it was a staph infection. Like I had a, a cut in my leg. And, like, when I thought yeah. it was healing, you know, you go through the normal color discoloration when you uh, tear into a muscle. And, you know, I had to keep watching it, but I didn't want to go to the doctor. And it started getting where it, it was getting hard and had me really, really worried about it. But the, the good thing is it did go away. But, like, in the back of my mind, it was, you know, it was actually getting down to the point where I was thinking that it was actually something serious. And you know, you gotta, you gotta, the infection's just no joke. What, what I've been battling all, you know, saying the last, you know, weeks, you know, it must go from your jaw down into your chest. Uh, the infection shit, man, man, that stuff's nothing to play with, man. There's definitely nothing to play with. Let's see, here's another fan question. What was your favorite city to wrestle in? Oh, uh, shit. That one's hard, too, because, you know, Milwaukee was always rocked. The fucking... Uh, so that shows in Indy were rock. Fucking Philadelphia was unbelievable. Um, you know, uh, those that I would say were, you know, when the, the halves were sold out, the hottest crowds, you know. Um, but I love, I enjoy working everywhere. I love, I enjoy 
really working in front of new fans that actually got to see me live and just follow me on the internet, you know. Um, I love working in new towns. You know, there's not too many new towns I can work, so I've done work everywhere. <laughs> so I don't have uh, too many new towns that I can work, but, uh, um, you know, each area has its different ups, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's different. It's different things to bring to the table. Yeah. Like, Right now, if you'd get a call to go overseas, would you do it? Yeah. Uh, I may do one last run for Japan. You know, uh, maybe. It depends on my body, man, and, and how healthy I can get. That's, that's the issue right now. Yeah. You know, if I can be back in top six, because Japan's a, a strenuous, uh, a strenuous, strenuous type of deal. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's a whole different kind of different kind of ball game. Like I know, after I broke my leg, you know, it I, I believe it took me longer to recover than what it should have because I got in the ring so quick after yeah. I broke my leg. You know, I didn't take time like I should have, but yeah. that you know that did hurt me there with getting in the ring so quick. But, right. like you said, you, you know, you got to take care of your body. And that's definitely one thing I did not do after I broke my leg because I got in the ring too damn quick when I shouldn't have. Hell, I was still scared to bump in the ring. But I did it, which was stupid on my part. I got addicted to damn alcohol and I got addicted to pills. All because broken, break my leg and then I got in the ring too damn quick. Right. And... You, you got to make sure, like I said, that's the main thing. It's making sure, you know, your, your body and stuff is healed. And uh, thankfully... Yeah, I, you know, I screwed up a lot of times doing that shit. Yeah, because hell, I even... I had Chewy Martinez on my uh, show probably within the last two months, and he mentioned where he actually broke his ankle, I believe, right before a Mid-South show, and he still went out and did the Mid-South show because Necro got him on the show. And he wrestled right. with a broken ankle. Right. Yep. No, see, that's a, that's this. This will be a personal question for me. How? What's your opinion on Chewy Martinez? Ah, uh, Chewy's. I think he's underrated. How underrated? You know, he's been around a lot of years. He does a lot of good shit. He just don't get talked about as much as most people do. Yeah, uh, and I don't know what that is. You know what I'm saying? But uh, he's very underrated, man. The kid can do anything. You know, Chewy can do anything. I don't know why he hasn't grown up on the national scale the way he probably should have. Yeah, I, I completely agree because I've actually even talked to other, you know, bigger promoters about bringing him up and it just don't happen for some reason and I, I don't understand it. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Yeah, I don't know if it's for us. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what it is. So what about Zona 23? Have you watched any of their footage? Zona 23? No. It's a, it's an organization out of Mexico. Basically, they're in... It almost looks like a junkyard with a ring in it, but obviously death yeah, matches. I've heard about it. I have heard about it, but I, I don't know much about it. I haven't sat down and watched. Like I said, man, I've been dealing with so much of the personal shit going on. I haven't had much time to be able to deal with anything else. Yeah, I, actually, I haven't been able to sit down and watch one of their shows, but... It's definitely something that's on, like, you know, the the weekly radar of Rare. Right. Because it yeah, won't. Most definitely. Most definitely. It, yeah, I guess there's too much shit going on with the wreck and, you know, suppression and all this other shit going on with me right now. I just haven't had time to really sit down and concentrate on, uh, on wrestling. I'm looking forward, uh, if I can get healed and well, uh, the St. Ace next week, you know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to be doing the referees, the uh, guest referee in the main event of that, so. Hell yeah. Uh, that should be really good for, uh, for Kurt and ICW in Milwaukee. See, right now, <laughs> ICW to me is like the thing. Because here recently, I know a lot of people are going to say GCW, but here lately, and this, is just, this ain't just my opinion, this is stuff that I've read, of course, but a lot of people think that GCW during this COVID-19 period has fallen off a little bit. And I'm not talking right, about right. Kevin Brandon saying that they're off the radar completely. No, GCW is still the shit. They're the big group. But ICW right. has creeped in there and is fighting oh, yeah, them. You're talking about ICW, 
WCW New York, the ICW Milwaukee Killers too. Oh, this one's the New York Jersey area. Yeah, this New York, yeah, yeah. So I'm talking about ICW Milwaukee. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I hate it when <laughs> when there's two organizations with the same thing. Yeah, I know, I know, and I, I was, I was, I had the same issues, you know, when people were talking to me about different questions, they were thinking I was on the New York show, and it was the Milwaukee show, and. Yeah, because when you said that, I automatically thought of, yeah, the New York. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about the Insane Eight of, uh, in Milwaukee. Uh, it's an outdoor show. I forget exactly where it's at in Wisconsin, but somewhere in Wisconsin. Kansasville, Wisconsin, yeah. I see a lot of people that, like, one year ago, if you would have done a show outside, which has became a major thing this year because of the COVID, last year if you would have done it, everyone would be shitting on it. Because it's outside, you know, that wasn't a thing to be doing. Now, right now, because of this damn, you know, crisis, everybody is doing shows outside because that's basically all you can get away with. Right, right, right. Depending on what state you're in, yeah. And it's the only thing safe for the workers and the hand and fans. Yes. <laughs> because, honestly, right after Lethal Leap Year, which was in February, um... Kevin was talking about running another show, and this was still at the point when COVID was, you know, fairly new in the United States. I even told Kevin at that point, I was like, I don't know if I will do a show right now with this COVID, because for one, you know, obviously in a locker room full of, you know, wrestlers, and just in an arena full of fans, I was like, I don't know if that I would be involved in that. And obviously, then the United States went to shit because of it, so I didn't have to worry about it. <laughs> Yeah, see, I wasn't really con more uh, concerned about myself. My mom has asthma, and obviously I got them two baby girls. Those were the ones I had to be worried about this time. Right. And then, of course, my wife, too. I love you. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, we got to worry about the wife. The wife takes care of everything. Corp, I'll tell you something. Today we went to a gun show, and, you know... Every now and then, I like to be recognized as John Rare. You know, someone say, hey, that's John Rare, blah, blah, blah. Let me get a picture or autograph. We were walking out. We got stopped. People wanted a photo of my wife's shirt because we were at a gun show, and her shirt said, fuck gun control. I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> that's great shit. But, but, you know, every now and then, I like to be recognized. <laughs> yeah. For sure, for sure. So, do you have any final words that you would like to send out to the fans? Uh, just uh, stay tuned, man. I got a, I got a one of a kind website that's getting ready to come out. Uh, it's going to be corporatrobinson.net. And uh, it's going to have a lot of information. It's going to be totally different than any other wrestling website you've ever seen. Um, it's going to be interactive. There's going to be things that the boys can learn from, guys. You know what I'm saying? It's going to have a lot of info on it. Uh, how to get insurance, you know what I'm saying, when you don't have any, things like that, shit that, you know, a lot, a lot of times uh, when you're getting in this business, you just don't know or know, or meet, don't know how to find it, and we're going to have all those tools on this website. Hell yeah. Uh, but other than that, man, thanks, thanks for the support, man, I appreciate you having me on, and uh, anytime you want me back, just let me know. Oh yeah, definitely will. So fans, yet again, thanks for tuning in tonight. This is John Rare, we will see you again. And up next, we have something even more special for you.